Hey, this is bribery. You're here for a reason. You've got a problem. It's not a problem that is isolated to you. It's a problem that almost every student I've ever had and almost every producer that I've worked with has this problem in some way, shape or form. You can't finish your songs. You look in your hard drive, you've got more unfinished songs than finished songs. Open up your door right now. You've got an unfinished song that you're working on that you can't work out how to finish. This video is built to address some of those components. So I've got a track here in Ableton that is an idea of an unfinished track where it's got parts in it that I'm pretty happy with, but I don't know where to take them. So I'm going to play this for a little bit so you can get an idea of what it sounds like. <laughs> And then it circles back around. Now, the parts that are in there, well, I don't have a problem with them. I like them. They, they work as a functional loop. They've kind of got the crunchy kind of flavor that I like. But let's have a look at the duration here. If we look at that total duration down in the bottom left, we've got a 19 second loop. Well, there's two parts of the loop. So you could say they're approximately 10 seconds each. That's not a full song. That's not enough. There's not enough there for me to say this is done. I have to do more. And at this stage, this is when you as a producer, you're going to ask yourself a question. What's missing here? What's actually missing from your track? What's missing from the loop? And you're going to make the same mistake that everyone makes. You're going to say this, hey, it needs more layers. And you will be forgiven for taking this track because uh, the production world out there, it's filled with colors and flavors and different devices and different instruments and different equipment, whatever it happens to be, which are all fun and instantly gratifying to use. Or a lot of the time they can be instantly gratifying, whether it's a new synth or it's more samples or whatever it happens to be. It's really easy to add more layers. But there's a problem with adding more layers. We are moving the wrong direction. We are moving down. We're moving vertically. In fact, in this poxy little graphic that I made, you might have noticed that I actually moved downwards because that's what you are doing in your door. As you're adding new tracks, you're going down further and further and further and further and further. And, further. and none of this is helping you complete your song because your song doesn't move down, it moves sideways. That might sound really obvious, right? Let's get rid of that. We need to move over here. We need to move to something else. Instead of moving to layers, we need to move through the composition, which moves sideways. And if we don't move through the composition, you will have another unfinished loop stuck on your computer that you won't know what to do with or stuck on your hardware equipment and you won't know what to do with. How do you move forward? There's an immediate problem with moving forward, which is probably the reason why you keep moving down instead of moving sideways and moving across. It's because this stuff that you have made probably took quite a bit of effort. Even if it's a simple thing, even if it's a genre you've worked many times before, even if you've copied somebody else's tune and somebody else's vibe, it still takes effort. Once you've done that, you might even go to the effort of making a second section. And that has taken even more of your energy. And then you go, hey, I want to move sideways. Whoops. There is a gigantic gaping gray void right here. And this is what we are trying to fill. And there's a problem with that. It's scary. It's intimidating. And it takes energy. And if we have already made some loops that we liked, I've got two sections here, 
and or, already I like them, but where does it go? If I tried to reinvent something brand new here, I am going to quit. I'm going to stop working on this tune. And this is probably what has stopped you moving on from the loop is you keep looking at that gap. Whether you're looking at it here in your door or it's occurring on your hardware equipment and you're thinking, what is this this gap going to be filled with? Because it took me all my energy to make these things. How can I repeat that again? Because man, I'm getting tired. What can I do next? And I'm going to show you a couple of tricks. First of all, when we move into the composition, we have a couple of things to play with. We have compositional building blocks and, <laughs> and we have production building blocks. I'm going to get to them in a sec because I'm going to show you something that you should all start to do and see if it works for you. This is my particular workflow. Once I adopted this idea, it, it started essentially rescuing songs for me. It started rescuing loops for me in terms of instead of them dying on my hard drive without me ever finishing them, all of a sudden I started finishing more and finishing more. And this technique is actually really blindingly simple. Instead of moving downwards, we're going to force this composition across with the most obvious technique in the world. We're going to copy and paste this. I'm going to duplicate this across. Now, all of a sudden, my 20-second project is now, well, close enough to 40 seconds. It's 38 seconds. So now we've got more. And I know what you're thinking. Well, Brabs, you can't just copy and paste your track because people are going to get bored. And you are right. People are going to get bored. You're going to get bored working on it. You'll feel like you just copy and pasted the song across because that's what you did. Once you have copied and pasted it across, you need to look at your new section here. In fact, let's just add a locator and call it new, just so we know this is the new section. And when you have a new section, you have to start making immediate changes. And by immediate changes, I don't mean reinvent it because then you'll have the same problem as before. Instead, we're going to go to a little bit of a building block. Let's go to composition first. There are three main things that we could do here. We can take the notes and adjust the timing left or right or transpose them up or down. I like to think these in think of these in terms of the D-pad on a game controller because it's something you're probably all familiar with. You can move up, you can move down, you can move left, and you can move right. Now, in terms of how that would work here within the door, that means that if we took this section, for example, let's take these keys. Some sparkly, twinkly keys. All right, let's make an immediate change on them. Let's take the whole thing, let's transpose it down. Whoa, should have had that switched off. All right, sounds different. Let's bring it down even further. Oh, it's getting spooky. And how does that sound different? Because we got to check, right? This is what it sounded like before. How about now? Well, there's not enough change there. Okay, we've changed one thing. Let's change another. How about this thing? So we could do the same thing. We could move up or down. We can move left or right. Let's take this one. Let's bang warp onto it. And let's move it down an octave. Now does it sound different? Here's the orig original. And the new one. All right, so we're already starting to get somewhere. It's already sounding different. Is it dramatically different? No, but is it different? Yeah, so it doesn't sound like a copy and paste at all right now. Well, entirely. Let's do the same thing here. Let's listen to this ripper bass that I've got. And let's just do the same thing. We don't have to reinvent a new technique each time. Let's bring that down an octave, see how it sounds. Oh, it sounds cool. It sounds very ghostly. It's the original. That's the new version, but you know what? I'm getting thrown by these drums. They're kind of... They're doing, they're doing a bit too much. So I'm gonna do something a little bit different here. I'm gonna make sure this is cropped. 
and I'm going to warp it into repitch mode. And I'm going to stretch this across. So we're going to get a halftime feel to the drums and they're going to be real dark because they're in repitch mode. Ooh, ho, 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 stinky. Now while I'm at it, I actually might take my keys that I pitched down two octaves. I'm going to bring them up because now the other stuff is dark. This stuff doesn't need to be so dark as well. In fact, it could go up. Now, does that sound different to before? Ooh, yeah, it does. And I've literally just moved stuff up or down. I've stretched one drum track out left to right. I haven't even really changed the left right position of the notes. Cool, so I've already made a pretty big change there. What else could we do? We could also modulate the key, the scale, and the timing of the different components in there. I kind of already did the timing. Honestly though, changing key and changing scale, lots of producers uh, have struggles with that. So we don't have to do all of the things on this list, but it is one of the things you could do. So from that compositional perspective, yeah, you could move it left or right, you could move it up or down, or you could fully modulate it if you wanted to. So we might apply that same idea to this section. And again, let's use the same trick. We don't have to change trick every time. Let's do the same thing. Let's bang this into repitch mode and let's stretch it out so it sounds real. Let's take this thing, this bass. Let's see what that sounds like up. Oh, I love the beats mode, how it gets real wonky. And while we're at it, let's... Actually, I'll make another change in a sec, because I don't want to give too much away. And let's take this pluck sound, which is doing this. Let's move... Actually, let's use... Instead of transposing the whole thing, let's take these notes, transpose them up. Let's just take a couple of random ones, transpose them up. Let's transpose something down, up. Down, down, up, down, up, why not? we've got this really nice kind of uh, descending pattern here that has a variation to, bef to before. It's not dramatically so, but hey, we're getting there. It's part of the funky fun, you know? And here, this one. Again, let's use the same trick. Let's take the whole thing down. And again. Now let's listen to it. Compared to before. Right, compared to this. So now we've got essentially a verse and a hook, or a hook and a verse, depends on which way you want, and then variations of those different things. So here, let's call this the hook. And this hook too. All right, we've got verse one. And we got verse two. And all of these things already are different from each other. And I've avoided recreating anything new. I've just borrowed something I already made. Now, this was on purpose. I chose these words back here, this idea of building blocks purposely, because everything that you've already put within your session 
is a block of information, whether it's audio or whether it's MIDI, doesn't matter. These are blocks that we can move around. We can move them left and right. We can move them up and down. We can stack them on top of each other. We can lay them against each other. We can do all of this stuff to these elements that we've already built. We don't need to create new blocks necessarily all the time. Of course, if you needed to add a new layer, you could, but that's what got you into this problem in the first place. Also note that this thing that I'm working on, listen to how complex it is. There's heaps of stuff going on. There's only five layers playing at any one time in this track, and it's already complex. Here's the other thing that will happen as you add more and more tracks. That complexity goes up, so it becomes even harder to deal with and work out, hey, which bit is working and which is not. But there are ramifications on the mixing process as well. All of a sudden, you've got more stuff in there. There's more clashing frequencies. There's more resonances. There's more things that you've got to decide where they are positioned in the stereo field. Should they be pushed into the distance? Should they be up front? It just makes that whole process really hard, really difficult. And as you'll see here, I've got five layers and it's plenty complex for at least this kind of style, which is some kind of weird kind of glitched vibe. It's already, in fact, pretty messy. And this is already going to give me a little bit of trouble during the mix because there's lots of complex frequencies bouncing around. So it means that if we keep stacking stuff, it's going to make it even harder to slog through the mud and try and finish this song off. That's why we're keeping it simple and we're moving sideways. Now that we've got those building blocks, we can keep doing that same method. We can keep moving stuff across. But now that it's in building blocks, I'm going to make a little bit of a call in terms of how this should feel in terms of structure. I want this verse to be first over here, and I want it to then go from that into the fast style uh, hook kind of feel, and then into that verse again, then into the slow style hook. So then it will feel a bit more song-like. And if you look at that, I've got verse, chorus, verse, alternate chorus, alternate verse, which these can function kind of like a bridge. And we've already got duration-wise a minute 26. Now, at the same time, it's a minute 26, so it's starting to approach a structure of a song. But if we hit play... I don't necessarily just want to start my whole track cold like that. So maybe I would make a call about what I'm going to do, and I'm going to steal part of the hook, and I'm going to bring this across to here. Now that would be a pretty strange thing to start off with cold, but then kind of might work. I'm just going to fade it in. I'm going to fade that, and I might take something else as well. I might take those slow drums from over there. Now I'm starting to kind of mix and match. I've got vocals from here, I've got drums from here, and I'm fading them in. I might even take this, this bass patch, bass moment we'll call it. Let's have that come in part way through, like this. It kind of works, but it kind of doesn't. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to move everything across because it doesn't quite work yet. But I'm going to, again, use some building blocks. Because I started with this halftime feel. I'm just going to keep repeating it there. I'm going to put it in here. Whoops. Didn't copy and paste. Nice one, Grimes. Nice one, nice one. There we go. Maybe this one's going to start on the wonky feel instead. Alright, 
not the greatest transition in the world, but already there's something really important that's happened. Have a look at my structure and have a look at what was a less than 20 second loop. And already we're starting to rock this. Out. This is two minutes 15 and it's not even close to finished or refined, but I've broken out of that loop and I've pretty much just used that D-pad method that I mentioned before, moving notes up or down, moving them left or right and then copying and pasting. This isn't world beating techniques here. I've just taken the good thing that I already did and I'm gonna do more good things with it. Let's move back to my hacky chart that I've got over here because that's the compositional building blocks. What else have we got? Of course, we've got production building blocks. What's in there? Now, everyone's gonna be different and this is different for different uh, styles, of course, but effectively, we're gonna have three main things that we can play with. What are the active layers? What's the mix and automation components? And what's the sound design of those components as well? Those three things are pretty nebulous and they're pretty wrapped up together. But as an example, I've already kind of touched on this with doing fading. That's already a basic mixing slash automation technique, depending on how you want to apply it. Let's look at some other components. Let's look at this structure and let's go to this part. So we know that that's gonna cycle around. So let's first of all look at the active layers. When it comes out of here, let's immediately start messing with these active layers. I'm just gonna chop back the drums so they don't start immediately. And let's do a classic uh, hip hop break here by just muting everything on that drum entry. So it comes out. Ah, oh, I dropped it in the wrong point. I want to stop on the snap. Damn, badunun. Yeah, I want that. Delete. Ah, close enough. I could refine that later, but the, the concept. And I'm going to take this part and I'm going to, ho ho, shock horror. Move it up, move it up again. Move it up. Ah, the sound patch isn't working. Let's take this part and let's pitch it up. Why not? All right, so we've just played with some of the active layers to add something interesting in there. We could even, let's take, let's take that vocal chop as well and let's start to add some different style mangling to it. Let's add an EQ. Let's just chuck an EQ on there like that. Oh, it's already had an EQ on there, whatever. I'm gonna add some little stupid chops like that. So let's switch on some automation and let's have a, let's use one of those automate, this thing that I never use. Oh yeah, that's why I never use it because it's long as hell. All right, and there's a way to shorten it. And it, yeah, there it is. I always forget, but apparently not. Duplicate, 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 duplicate. All right, that's adding something in there. And let's do the same thing. Let's warp this. Let's chuck it up. I like beats mode on vocal chops because it sounds stupid. Yeah, you can hear it kind of stuttering and kind of glitching while I'm at it. I'll chuck some verb on it. But just for that section. So again, a little bit of a decision here when it comes to our uh, sound design or mixing chops. So that is kind of working its way in there. Need to make sure that that EQ is off for the other parts as well. So I don't cook that. Whoops. Bring it back, bribes, bring it back. 
I'm gonna take it back. And of course, I've got to chop that out for the classic style mute. at the end. I'm going to take out that last hit. Yeah. And as it works its way towards the end here, I need to make this sound a bit more interesting. So let's take my high pass filter that's here on the bass and let's add a little bit of a riser so that as it comes into this next section, there's something going on. Now it's gonna choke out so many of the frequencies that I'm going to have to bring some of that energy back and I'm gonna do that by adding some reverb that's moving up at the same time. Whoa. And then I'm in this weird part. I really like that thing that's here. Yeah, I, I like that. I like that. So I'm going to take that part and emphasize it, not just with reverb, but this delay that I've got here as well on the return. Yeah. I might even put some of that grain delay that's on the keys. Yeah. All right, let's see how that works as a transition. Let's add some sugar and spice to this part. And again, all of this that I'm doing is easy to refine, but the key that I've, you know, I keep keep talking about here is that I haven't moved down at all. I haven't haven't moved vertically. I haven't added more layers. I'm taking the layers that I've already made and I'm tweaking them so I can move sideways. Let's do the same over here. Let's make this a real rip-roaring delay part that comes up. Make sure it pops down afterwards. Now this is all adding information in here for the transition. So let's try that part again. Working better with this automation, kind of creating a bit of a false riser. I actually want that drum part back now. I want that snap. But I'm going to blow that uh, snare out with reverb. Whoa, forgot my safety marker. Yeah, safety. Safety first. Yeah, and I might even blow. I know. I know people say, you don't blow out kick drums with reverb. I'll do what I like. In fact, this whole part could get a bit syrupy with the... I'm going to go into my reverb here and just make sure it doesn't have too much lows going into it. So I'll just cut off some of the extreme lows before it hits the verb, which is the very fantastic overall river. Yeah, 
that's that's awesome. Whoops, loop. Now that part's gonna function way better as a bridge. So I'm going to bring back my fast hook from, where is it? Nope, there it is. I'm gonna bring it back here. Whoops. So now it comes out of here. Alternate, this is second verse. Definitely pull out the drums for this part. And I want it to highlight that. Whoa! Baby come back. Gonna get a copyright strike for that baby come back. Oh, I nailed it. Yeah, I want that, but I want that louder and it's pitched down so it'll sound better pitched up. Yeah, that gives it some emphasis. And let's spank it with a bit of reverb. Spank. Yeah, listen to that hum. And I'm gonna do a little pitch dropper here on this bass part, let's take that envelope. Let's let's make it go. I hate, hate the envelopes here in Ableton, but yeah, you know, you gotta do what you do. <laughs> He's got it. I want that to be curved. Oof. Oh yeah. Get rid of this keys part, don't want that. That made a weird click, which kind of works for me, but I'm just gonna chop that out with a fade. Oh, here's a classic for you. This is going to work really well, actually. Let's fade out these drums because, again, we've heard this before. So how are we going to spice it up? Let's make it interesting. Let's pull it out. Let's pull it right out. In fact, let's then take these parts, let's pull them across, and let's take what we've got, what's playing this and this. Let's even put the pluck in there. I've accidentally just made the end of the song. Maybe. Ooh, accidental smooth. Let's just listen to the whole thing and see if it works. You can skip ahead if you're not feeling the vibe. Whoops, something salt. No, fade in. Classic fade in.
I mean, is it a perfect song? No. May or may not be your vibe. That's kind of regardless of the point. You might have noticed that I was just adding locators here as this was playing through to show what were the original parts. And in fact, they're not completely original because I made a couple of little minor choppy chops in there. Nothing kind of overboard, but kind of made some tweaks into there. That's what we started with. And we started with something that was all up. What's that when they're combined together? 20 seconds long, that's what it was. And now when you consider the reverb tail is here, we now have a three minute track. I didn't really do much. I moved some stuff up, I moved some stuff down, I stretched some stuff out, added some fades, added some EQ, added some really basic effects, and I've stretched this less than 20 second loop out to a full three minute track. This is obviously isn't finished, it needs plenty of refining, but now it's prime for, hey, is there going to be a lead section over the top? Is there going to be structured vocals? Or am I going to work more on the vocal chops? Or do I want to find something that's lead-like that will fit over the top even more effectively? And all I've done this whole time, really, is thinking about these things. Thinking about the D-pad when it comes to the notes thinking about how I can take my active layers and mess with them using the tools that I already have in my session. I've already got a couple of sends and returns set up, so I don't have to agonize over my different kind of effects over here. I'm just kind of making some basic changes and then scrapping around with automation. The important thing is that I never went down. I, I never went vertically. I only moved sideways. And this is the key, you know, it's been however long, 30 minutes or whatever, of me kind of demonstrating these basic techniques that you probably already know how to do all of those techniques. You probably have been applying them in building those initial loops to begin with. But if you don't move sideways, you are forever moving down, and this song would be another dead track sitting on your hard drive. Hope this has given you some ideas. Remember, these tools and techniques can be applied conceptually to anything, any door, any program that you're using, any hardware equipment, whatever it happens to be, the concept doesn't change. We're moving stuff up, we're moving stuff down, we're moving stuff left and right, or stretching it out, or contracting it, or changing the sound design on it. That functions with any door. It doesn't matter what platform you're using. Uh, I purposely used, you know, pretty generic uh, effects and stuff like that in here so it can hopefully be applicable to you and your style. If you've got any questions about this process or you want to share your experience, feel free to leave me a comment. I'll always get back to you. Aside from that, hope you enjoyed the video and check you all soon.